amazing to be here and be part of this rally. As a mother of five children and grandmother of two, <laughs> as I think about the challenges of climate change, I'm very concerned for the future of our children. Despite the difficulties we face, we can make a difference if we bring our joy, our persistence, and our faith to address this global crisis. Amen? Amen. As a spiritual leader, I have both an individual and a community moral obligation to act and to rise to this challenge. And that I shall do. Deciding whether I have time for changes in habits and behaviors is no longer an option. That's not an option. Future generations are counting on us. Amen. So this is a time to encourage our families and our friends to be more consistent. Consistent with recycling, calling on representatives to act on our behalf, to pay attention to how we're using our natural resources, and to challenge wrong-headed religious theology of domination right. over the earth with humans at the top of the food chain instead of partnering with the very creation that sustains us. We need lots of conversations. Conversations at the family dinner table, our recreational events, and at our houses of worship. When I serve dessert, I serve conversation about climate change at my house. This issue is not just important, but critical to the sustainability of our lives as mothers and those we love. We are in a full press, a full press, so we have to keep learning as much as we can from each other and from those who can teach us more. And for me, that has been our Mother Earth community at Spiritus Christi, who I'm so grateful for, and Pope Francis, and heroes like all of you. At our church, we decided to focus an entire year intentionally on the issue of climate change with the parish to bring our influence to 1,500 people who gather to worship with us each week. That's a lot of people to put a message in front of. And so I call on religious institutions and people of faith everywhere to join in this fight for our lives. And we are in a fight for our lives. Each of us can do something to turn things around. And in the words of St. Francis, when we start by doing what's possible, then suddenly we'll be doing what seems impossible, and that is saving our planet. Wow. Thank you, Myra. And next we have Elizabeth Henderson of Peacework Farm Community Supported Agriculture and of Northeast Organic Farming Association of New York. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. The first thing I heard about this morning, my friend Susie Pellucci from uh, Irving, Massachusetts, called me up to tell me that the Kinder Morgan Corporation had given up on its contract to put a pipeline through the beautiful farmland of Franklin County, Massachusetts. So that is a real victory. And if we can stop Kinder Morgan, we can stop the rest of them. Yeah. Of all the work I have done in my life, my most satisfying project was raising my son. And it makes me very happy to see how lovingly and caringly he is raising his son. Now I want this earth to be healthy so that they will be able to enjoy the bounties of nature free from the contamination caused by a system that values profit over people and the health of the land on which we all depend. For the past 36 years, I have worked as an organic farmer. A central concern of organic farming is healthy soil. And one of the main things that makes soil healthy is a steady supply of carbon from crop residues, from compost, from manures. We focus on building organic matter in the soil and 58% of organic matter is carbon. Nature has provided us humans with a brilliant way to store carbon in the soil. Green plants. 
Through photosynthesis, plants transform the energy from the sun and the gases from the atmosphere into carbon. As much as one third of the surplus carbon dioxide in the atmosphere driving climate change has come from poor land management practices that cause loss of carbon as CO2 from our farms and working lands. To grow food, we have cut down forests, plowed up prairies. Farms are getting bigger and bigger, using industrial methods of tillage, fertilizers like anhydrous ammonia, synthetic nitrogen that feeds plants but breaks down soil carbon, and herbicides like Roundup and atrazine that destroy soil microorganisms. By contrast, beneficial long-term storage of carbon in soils can be achieved by using organic methods, cover crops, rotations, compost. To hold the Earth's temperature rise below two degrees, it is not enough to reduce emissions by no longer burning fossil fuels. We also have to stock carbon in the soil. Yes. Every one of us can join in this hopeful campaign, and you can do it on any scale. You can build carbon in a planter box on your windowsill, or grow grains and vegetables on hundreds of acres. By taking care of the little bit of land that is in your stewardship, you can increase the carbon in the soil where it does us some good. You can do it in your yard, a community garden, or through buying food from the local organic farmers who are becoming more numerous in our area every year. You can start making a difference today or when you go shopping tomorrow. <laughs> so I invite you all to Peacework Organic Farm for our May Day party and festival Sunday, May 1st from 2 to 6 p.m. If you would like to see a farm that takes carbon from the air and puts it in the soil. Join us in dancing around the maypole. You don't have to know how to dance. Um, it's an ancient ritual to ensure the fertility of the soil. Then we'll walk through the wildflowers of the Cry Preserve, named after Doug Cry. You can meet our new team of draft horses. You can visit the mushrooms of the Abe Johnson, Abe and Noah Johnson Brothers Forest Farm, and you can take a tour of our farm. Reducing emissions from fossil fuels is urgent, but only by restoring carbon to the soil will we keep temperatures from rising above one and a half degrees. So we need all your help. Thank you. Hi everybody. My name is Mary Lupian. I'm a mother and stepmother to two wonderful little five-year-old girls. And as Linda said, I'm the uh, coordinator for the Rochester City Mothers Out Front. I've been concerned about social justice since I was little. When I was a young adult, I learned about climate change and I was moved to commit myself to the little everyday actions I could control, like turning down the heat, recycling, trying not to waste. The problem of climate change seems so big and so far away, but that's different now. My conversion to activism began when the tsunami hit Asia in December of 2004. I was deeply affected by the massive human suffering I saw, and I felt that deep in my heart. Climate change affects me in the same way, as if right now we are standing at the water's edge, watching as the waves recede back into the bowl of the ocean waiting, not knowing what's about to happen. But we do know what is happening. There are so many that are already suffering and dying because of the sea level rise, drought, and extreme weather. And in New York, we are already feeling these effects. We are all connected. On November 29th of last year, 500 of us felt like enough was enough, and we marched for climate justice with marchers all around the world on the eve of the Paris Climate Conference. And we were filled with hope and cautious optimism 
as the 195 world leaders gathered together to solve our climate crisis. Today, we have called Earth Eve, the day before Earth Day. This is the most, argu the arguably the most important Earth Day in our history, and the day when 155 countries will sign the agreement that seeks to keep global temperature rise this century below two degrees Celsius and to drive efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Temperature oscillates between two and a half, or one and a half and 1.4 degrees currently. We're dangerously close to 1.5 degrees. 2015 was the hottest year on record. And the first three months of this year put us on target for 2016 to be even hotter. Thanksgiving and Christmas were t-shirt wearing weather. While many were enjoying the sun and warmth, I did too, I was also terrified inside, imagining the doomsday scenarios and picturing my own children in a new world that I, I don't know what they will have to face. But I refuse to accept this fate for us. Naomi Klein from 350.org says we are left with a stark choice. Allow climate disruption to change everything about our world or change pretty much everything about our economy to avoid that fate. But we need to be very clear. Because of our decades of collective denial, no gradual, incremental options are now available to us. This past election, with this election that's going on right now, many have talked about incremental steps to clean energy economy. And as Naomi stated, this is not an option. We must dream big. We must tirely fight and hope a better future for our children, for us, for the human race. We must not contemplate defeat, but visualize our victory over the forces that deter progress. There is so much that we can do to affect change. Like Elizabeth stated, all we have to do is grow an organic garden. We can do those small changes. We can save water. We can keep, turn the heat down. But we also have to think on a bigger level. We need to vote our conscience on climate in every election, local, state, and national. We need changes at every stage of government to make this happen. We are seeing historic participation in electoral politics and climate change is now a major part of the conversation. We must keep this momentum going. Today, tomorrow, until we, have, we the people have won the right to a livable climate. We are bond, beyond planting trees and saving Mother Earth. This Earth Day, we will need to stand up and fight for our own survival. Mother Earth will recover, but we will not. are melting, the seas they are rising, and people are sweltering as temperatures soar. The land is disappearing as oceans are encroaching. The people are fleeing away from the shore. In Congress they bicker to stubborn to dig while Earth's getting sicker, they don't do a thing. The problem's wide-ranging, the climate is changing, and it is endangering our lives as we sing. We must be aware that unless we take care that our planet so fair could become a dead stone. The polar bears are dying, some people are crying. We must stop denying climate's altering our home. Ignore naysayers blether, let's work hard together to stabilize the weather and tamp warming down. Without any derision, let's take the decision to curb our emissions before cities drown. If we don't pay heed, our children will need to pay for our greed with lives hot and mean. I hear we've only 
20 years left to change plenty or else not so gently will fade from the scene Long time.